Good morning, guys. Can you hear me? We had 1,000 viewers yesterday. I think that we're gonna have more today. <clears throat> Interesting. Short float, 38% RKT, that's a lot. That is indeed a lot. All right, I'm going to eat up my food and I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Okay, let's see. There are some EP candidates. Um, Sarkat is interesting, but they're gonna have negative growth, EPS and revenue growth the next two years. So I don't know. Is there a reason for this to go up? I don't know. The high short interest maybe. So it could be an EP, but um, yeah. Other than that, not much that I'm looking <clears throat> Mara, perfect, perfect, perfect rejection. The third day bounce. Or actually it was the second day bounce. Perfect rejection at the 10 day and look at it now. Learn this setup, guys. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a very good uh, shorting setup in the right type of a market environment. Riot is down. Yeah, all well, my no, shorts are down. Um, GBTC, it's still surfing the 20 day. AMC had a perfect late day fade yesterday. Textbook. Oh, never mind. Tesla is actually gapping up. Q is also. Never mind. Not all my shorts are down. Some of my shorts are gapping up a bit. And GME. Also late day, big, big late day fade. And the mRNA looks like it just had a big pop. We'll see. I'm going to use the 10 day as my... I'm going to use break even as my stop. Going to give it some leeway. I'm not really looking at anything. There, there are some like RKT and maybe DraftKings breaks out on earnings, but I'm not super excited about these things right now. These types of setups, I don't know. Haven't decided yet. Oh, it's not as liquid as I thought it was. Hmm. Also, to all the new people, follow the instructions on the screen. If you don't, you will get muted, and you will get muted, and you will get muted, and you get then you get blocked. And you will be sabotaging for everyone else. Seriously, follow the instructions on the screen. To all the new people. And to the old people too. Uh, yeah, I heard it. Uh, well, I heard it was a great interview. I haven't listened to it by my, uh, myself. I haven't listened to it myself. But apparently it was good, from what I've heard. I don't really remember what I was saying, but... Apparently people are liking it. Right, good luck everyone. <clears throat>
Well, you've been in this stream for at least 30 days since you're able to write in the chat. You should know that I don't talk much in the open because I'm busy trading. Come on, man. How can you miss? How can you not have noticed for the past 30 days? <laughs> I don't see a lot. I, I really don't. This is... Um, yeah, there's really not much going on. still think this is a market uh, to be cautious in, not to be aggressive in. We've had almost 12 months of very aggressive markets, easy money, and now, you know, you have to adapt. <coughs> easy money is not there yet <coughs> anymore. For now. Not seeing any setups means you should trade very little, very cautiously. I just don't see any good long or short setups. Maybe a few, but, but you know, it's they, they just, just... You want to see a lot of setups. If you only see a few, the failure rate is pretty high. Do I consider Macy's a failed breakout yesterday? Did Macy's have a breakout yesterday? It just looks like a random up day. There was not a setup there. So no, it wasn't a failed breakout because there was no, it's not a setup. It's just a random day. <clears throat> I, I do kind of like this Baidu potential if, uh, on the short side if it loses the 20 day. And NIO if it loses the 100 day, but I'm uh, not, not sure it's it, they're good setups today. They're probably not that good setups today. We'll see. If Strafkins is a setup, sure. It has a nice short and uh, that earnings. But it's uh, not breaking out yet. Isn't everything a big uh, arc holding? Arc has grown so big, they have a lot of big holdings. Arc is the market. <laughs> Yeah. Rig. Well, 
Yeah, no, I don't see a setup. It's too choppy. But also, I, I think the oil trade, you know, it's it's that train has sailed. Like oil, the, the good setups that we've had a lot of, you know, big running oil the past two months. I think the whole sector needs to go sideways for a bit. And this is a little bit of a laggard oil name. So, you know, the, yeah, the also put things in context, like... A lot of these oil names are look very extended and vulnerable. I wouldn't want to buy a laggard name in any case, personally. Only if like the start showing some type of relative strength. But right now it's just been a laggard. The setup itself isn't too bad. It would be nice if it tightened up, but you know, still, if you put it in context, it's not that great. But if it tightens up, it could be a better setup, obviously. P10. Yeah, P10 broke out last week. That was a good setup. Airbnb showing relative strength. Not sure about that. It's just inside of a range. DraftKings, it's flagging, but it's not really a super explosive type of name. And it had earnings, you know. If it can't break out here, it's never gonna break out. Yeah, this is not the market to be aggressive. We've had like the best markets over the, in 20 years over the past 12 months, and now we're getting a little bit of a hangover. A lot of people realize they weren't as good of a traders as they thought they were, and maybe they shouldn't have quit their day jobs. That's the type, but that's the market phase we are in. Now, obviously, that can change at any time. You know, everything could pick up, pick up again next week. But you know, right now we just we've seen these a lot of these high runners. We've seen them fade 50% in many cases, and uh, some other sectors like Dow Jones is uh, or was a leading sector for a bit. That's never a good sign. When down cho down chose is leading. But uh, everyone in this room is fine because uh, here we have specific setups and specific rules and we realize how these uh, cycles work. So that's great. Are ETFs a good way to gauge if, if a sector is hot? Sure. If you have a sector ETF that's uh, making a big move, obviously that sector is hot.
Like for example, I can just look at this XO, XOP ETF to know that the oil sector has been really hot over the past four, five months, four months. And it has. A lot of oil stocks are up 500%. At least the smaller ones. And some of the bigger ones are up maybe 100, 200%. You know, something like MRO. Up 170%. P10. Up 170%. What more oil names are there? What is this? WLL up 170%. This one looks weird though. <sighs> Man, I don't even know any oil names anymore. I used to have like 50 oil names in my head, but uh, I've forgotten all of them. I haven't traded oil names in such a long time. Yeah, Rig is another one. Now this one is up a lot. 400%. Baidu is losing the 20 day moving average. It's kind of nice of having these slow days. It's kind of exhausting when you have for like four months straight, you get this like a lot of action. You get, you can all, you, you can, you can barely breathe the first 30 minutes after the open. And now we get days like this. It's pretty chill. I'm about to go down and get a knocko. It, it disaster struck. I opened the fridge and there were no knockos in it. So I had to take a few from storage and put it in the fridge. I should have put them in the free freezer. So I'm trading without Nokko today. So in, in case I'm a bit grumpy, you know why. <laughs> if I reduce my markets, uh, pos ah, not, not necessarily. I just do fewer things. That's how I... Right now I haven't reduced my position size yet. But yeah, markets like these, if you keep buying breakouts, you're gonna shop up your account faster than... Uh, the mass murderer is gonna shop up his victims. And the uh, mass murder in this uh, scenario is uh, it is the market and you will be the victim. In case you guys didn't understand the analogy. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me on that. I have some experience. I have some experience in this uh, trading game. And once setup starts to merge again, then we'll get aggressive. Right now, you know, obviously I'm short a few things. Also long a couple, but really not doing much. I did uh, do some DraftKings long and Baidu short, but um, I'm not super excited about either of them. GME, I haven't even looked at it. Yeah, we'll see if it can... Make a lower high, or if it's gonna reclaim yesterday's that 152 level. What's the AMC doing? That AMC had such a perfect fade setup yesterday. When it lost VWAP late day. And have a stock up four, four, four days in a row. Big move. Gets tight, tight the whole day, and then loses loses that range that's uh, that's a big edge if you if you learn and understand this setup you you're gonna make a lot of money but they don't come out around too often what price did I get cost at who are you talking to I didn't get costs. I haven't traded in a it in a month. 
good setups. It depends on what type of setup, but parabolic shorts and breakouts, you've gotten them almost every day over the past 12 months. Best market ever. But this is, I would say, a normal market is more like today and yesterday, where it's just or actually yesterday was really good on the short side, but like today I'm just just I don't just don't see a lot. That that's that's a, that's a normal market usually. It's just not uh, much going on. Sometimes there's a bit more going on, but usually it's fairly slow. The ranges are you know there's just not this craziness going on. So let's see DraftKings that I went long is going down and sh Baidu that I went short is going down. So, so far I'm um, evening myself out today. Yay. Where can you learn from over, uh, more about the overall market clues? Well, experience having an open mind and listening to the market takes many years there's no book that can learn uh, teach you those things something you have to do yourself Riot is a parabolic long. Um, no, no, it's not a bar. No, it, it, the, the parabolic setup it doesn't matter if it's long or short. It has to be multiple days in a row. Uh, it has to be multiple. Now, let's say if these two days didn't happen, like if today happened two days ago, that I would have considered a parabolic long. But this is just pretty much the stock went sideways for three days and today it's down a little bit that's not a parabolic sh uh, long that's not a parabolic setup Well, that's what happens when you buy uh, breakouts in, uh, in a market like this. You take a loss. I did on DraftKings. It wasn't that great of a setup. The only reason I bought it is because it had earnings and it was, had a possibility of becoming an episodic pivot. But yeah, the, the market just, you know, the, the buying is not there. It's just not there. It looks like a lot of my shorts are also starting to fade now from the opening strength. Oh, I forgot about the Fisker. I think they had earnings. I totally forgot about it. Man, I've gotten so sloppy lately. It's unbelievable. I've been playing too much Hearts of Iron 4. But thankfully, the market has been very uh, benign, so every time I do something stupid, I get bailed out. But, you know, having a, having a position in your portfolio and, not, and forgetting that, it, that they have earnings, you know, it can bite you in the ass, and it will eventually. If you only have a 5% drawdown right now, that's really good. Because I can tell you, the average Robin Hooder probably has a 50% drawdown right now, over the past week. Just looking at some of the popular Robin Hood stocks. So 5% is great. Now you have to make 5% and you're going to be even. If you're down 50%, you have to double your account just to get back to even. Do you ever talk about short sell rules? Uh, sure, all the time.
Hey guys, I'm gonna go uh, and get some knocko. I need the knocko if I'm gonna keep talking a lot. CC IV, a mean reversion long? No. I don't see anything here. I don't see any. Oh, NIO losing to 100. Okay. Maybe. Wait. GME. It's too early to tell which ones are gonna be a market leaders. I, I think you know we're gonna have at least a few weeks of shop, 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 shop. But yeah, so far it's holding well. It's holding about a 10 day right now. It's a champion, as is Snapchat and Pinterest and some of the others. But you know, it's it's too early to tell. My plan is to shield as much as possible. So it'll be fresh when the market turns good again. A lot of these earnings names are fading. Every single one of them is fading. Gap, adopt, pop, then fade.
I, I think this arc, we're gonna see some type of flash crash in this arc. This thing has been, they are so, I mean, this thing is, I, I think there's something bad gonna happen. I, I just get it, this. There's just too many weak hands, just too many crazies holding this thing. And once they start seeing red in their accounts, It's gonna be interesting. I don't know, M man. Everyone is hailing that Kathy Wood is genius, but her team, like her team, consists of a. There's a lot of like twenty year olds. They've never seen a down market, and apparently they they you know they don't do a lot of research on a lot of these names either. Like I I, I unbelievable. They they added workhorse. It, it's just. Such an obvious, obvious scam. But the 20 year old analyst. Oh shit, my knock. So guys, do you think she's a bull market genius, or is 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 she gonna outperform other market cycles too? Because every time you get these fund managers that get hold as uh, geniuses, they never outperform again. You saw the same thing in the 2003 to 2007 bull market. You saw the same thing in the late 90s. You had these fund managers that were up like insane amounts. Their, their funds, uh, AUMs went up like 100 fold, 200 fold. And they never outperformed again in their career. They were just at the right time in the right place with the right strategy. Like, I like her, like, you know, she, she, she has the guts to bet on these, you know, companies that are changing things, how we do things. But, you know, buying something like Workhorse, it's like, are you even doing any an an analysis? Like, like, I mean, what's your process? Now, obviously, she's not involved in everything they buy. They buy and sell so many different things. Oh my god, this riot looks like it wants to go to the, the 50 day. I missed the ad on GME. I was gonna add when it lost VWAP, but uh, I was a bit too late. I'm so lazy, I'm so sloppy. Jesus Christ. I'm not the same trader I was uh, six months ago, I can tell you that. Too much Hearts of Iron 4. I blame, I blame uh, my uh, computer gaming. Oh yeah, you can have to add it on GME sooner. Add whenever you want. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter. As long as you have a set to risk. It's the money and the fame. Don't, don't care about the fame, but yeah, it's definitely money. I don't really care about it, you know, as much anymore. It's not gonna make much more of a difference. Yeah, being up uh, 1,500, no, actually, wait, no, being up 2,000% in uh, 
14 months, yeah, that does things to motivation, that's true. That is very true. Yeah, and guys, if you're not listening to the market, if you're not paying attention to what's happening in front of your eyes, if you're frenetic looking for breakouts right now, I mean, just look at what's happening in these earnings gappers, okay? They're all reversing. Look at how hard they reverse to the downside, every single one of them. That's not the one market you want to buy stuff on the long side. This is what I mean, listen to the market. Stop listening to opinions of other people. Listen to the market. That's the only, in trading, the only thing you should listen to is the market. No one else, no one knows anything. No one knows what's gonna happen, but the market will tell you what it will do. It's your job to listen. Yeah, they will tell you. <laughs> what I saw, well, it's it's been in front of my eye, you know, in front of all of us for the past couple of weeks. Obviously, you got all these stocks that were up thousands and thousands of percent, like stuff like um, as ZOM up three thousand five hundred percent in a few months bingo up 2500 percent in a few months um uh there were uh, sndl this thing was up 2000 percent in a few months like 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 you have all these like a lot of stocks just making big big these are extreme examples like these are like very low price stocks that you know make big moves but you know obviously like a lot of things were up like everything was just straight up something like baidu it's a large it's a mega cap stock you know th this was also it was up 160 percent and you know it's just not sustainable you know things don't go straight up ever for a while they can do so that was the first big warning sign a lot of extended stocks have, you know we've had a four month bull run where like you know very profitable a lot of big moves. The other thing was a lack of long setups. It was just not many good looking long setups. Everything was either very extended or sluggish and there, there were no like solid base basis in any stocks pretty much. Very, you know, so random stocks here and there. That was the second one. The third one, that's when I started really aggressively selling things and getting short was when these stocks started actually breaking breaking down. They were starting to break their 10-day their moving averages. You know, they started to break, you know, some stocks that were high tight flagging started breaking down. Stuff like Tesla, Plug, you know, I shorted with both hands. When you see high tight flags on already extended stocks, you know, that break down, that may, you know, high tide flags, they, they usually make move, big moves in the direction they break. They break out, they make big moves to the upside, break down, they make big moves to the downside. So, you, you know, the market has been screaming at us for several weeks that this was going to happen. 
all you had to do was to listen. And obviously, it's kind of hard to know what to listen for if you don't know what you're listening for. But, you know, with experience, you will realize it's the same things over and over again. The same cycles repeat over and over again. And this is yet another cycle. That's what I meant, that a lot of people who thought they were good and profitable and consistent traders, they will find out that, hey, wait, something is different. I'm seeing red in my portfolio. Things are not going straight up anymore. Maybe I should call my boss and uh, try to get my job back. But maybe I shouldn't have told him, fuck off, I'm going to make more money trading than on this shit job. Maybe I'll have to apologize to him. That's the see. That's the reality. Oh shit! GBTC. I have to get rid of this thing. It's just losing. Uh, I'm not gonna write it down to zero. Yeah, GBTC losing the 20-day 20, 20 moving average. And it's also taking out the lows uh, of this bounce day here. You know, uh, you know it, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign when these things lose their key moving averages. I'll rebuy it on a good setup like I did several times. Initially bought it here. I sold it. I got shaken out somewhere here. Then I rebought it a few days later on this breakout here. And then I have I think it happened two times. And here again I got stopped out I think on this day. And then I rebought it here on this day. 
But there's gonna be a, de a time when it's, you know, never comes back. It's gonna be a time. And that's what you have uh, protective stops for. Because if you don't, you're not going to last long in this game. Is Roku a good short setup? Um, yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah, I actually forgot about this thing. This is uh, one of the few leaders that hasn't really uh, broken down yet, but it's going to break down. If the market keeps going to go lower, this thing is going to go down as fast as it came up. But it's, right now it's still holding the 50-day. Uh, and it has a lot, big range here also. It's 380 area. Um, I hope it goes sideways a bit more and then starts fading maybe... I hope it doesn't go down today. I hope maybe next week or something. Yeah, I'm actually good. Good eye. I forgot about it. Square. Yeah, all the other leaders are actually going lower. Most of them. Uh, DraftKings wasn't an episodic pivot. It was an earnings breakout. Like it really didn't gap up that much, but it it was a decent breakout setup with earnings. If it hadn't had earnings, I wouldn't even have touched it. But sometimes when things break out on earnings, even if the setup is not perfect, they, they can work a lot really well. But again, you know, the market is just not the best right now. And, you know, the, you know, if you keep trying to buy breakouts in these markets, it, it, you know, th those markets are the worst when you have setups, but they... And they, they trigger, but they don't follow through and you end up taking a lot of small losses. You can really decimate your account that way. So, you know, I, I've learned the hard way, so I'm, I'm very careful trying to buy anything. You had 20 consecutive losing trades in October. Yeah, the market was in a correction. Yeah, I also had a lot of uh, small losses in October. I was a little bit too aggressive. Um, like the first part of the correction, let's go back to September, August, September. Like I nailed it. Like I sold most of my longs and I went heavily short here when the markets, uh, when, a, when they uh, rug pulled the market. Like this first part, first couple of weeks of the correction, I made a lot of money. So I'm very happy about that. But the problem is I started getting back, started buying too aggressively too early so I got shopped around a little bit in uh, I would say like mid-October or so mid-late October I got a little bit um, yeah that that you know I, I was a bit too aggressive I should have been you know much more careful uh, but then obviously the market turned and we got so a lot of like here early November mid-November there were so many five-star setups a lot of stocks had been basing for months and months and building higher lows and there were so many just absolutely amazing setups. Are you blaming the market correction on me? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Every time I show PNL, the market goes to shit. And every time I end up with, I have 30 po positions in my portfolio, the market goes to shit. Funny how it works. Lack of Noko, I actually drinking Noko now, but it's not as cold as it uh, should be. So I forgot to put them in the fridge. Guys, always plan things out before. Make sure everything is prepared for the trading day. Not having ice cold Noko, when the market opens, not a good thing. It's like driving without the seatbelt. Don't do it. Pro tip.
Is Knockup better than Monster? Uh, I like Knockup because there's no sugar in it. Mo I know Monster also has some uh, versions with no sugar, but uh, I, I do like Monster too, but I don't think their sugar-free alternatives are as good as Monster. Uh, as Knockup, sorry. I have no idea. They, they, look, it's probably full of all kinds of uh, nerve poisons. I'll probably get brain cancer in 10 years. From drinking too much noko but at least i won't get fat that's the most important thing and at least i'll also keep my teeth stevia is that kind of that some kind of uh nerve poison I'm gonna <laughs> fall off the world, edge of the world. Yeah, that's why I rarely leave the house. I'm so afraid of the edge of the world. Energy drinks are the worst for... Yeah, but not the sugar-free ones, right? Are the sugar-free ones also bad for your teeth? Hey, Fly W Meta, thanks man, I appreciate it. This is That's why I stream. I have to brush my teeth? Oh. I don't ce celebrate 10 million dollar days, no. When I've had my first $10 million day a month ago shorting GME, it was pretty cool, but it wasn't like, wow. It's like, okay, makes no difference. Just a number. It's, it's, it's at the point, it, it's just not so unreal. Like the past 14 months, or actually not, yeah, 14 months. That's when the craziness started. I'm up 2,000%. It's, it's just like a video game. It's just unreal. It feels like Elon Musk says that what that must have uh, been what he meant when he thinks we are in a simulation because it, when you when things are going so well it, it starts feeling a bit unreal and you only start to think is this a simulation like what's going on because I know I struggled so long trading and even after I become, became like a decently successful trader, I, I still had these periods when I struggled a lot. Nothing was working and, you know, it, it was just a pain in the ass. And, and now the past 14 months came ar along and it, it's just like picking up free money. It's unbelievable. It's just super crazy. That's also why I'm going to be really careful not doing any stupid stuff. I'm not going to force any trades because I know, you know, things can turn sour very fast. And things usually always turn sour after a good period. I don't know a lot of things, but I do know that. And that's all you need in the markets. Easy money is followed by uh, easy money making periods are followed by easy money losing periods. Rinse and repeat. That's all you need to know about the markets. <laughs> you can stop this simulation. <laughs> sure. 
DM me your uh, uh, bank uh, account. <laughs> Why don't I take 15 or 20 million and put it in a risk-free asset? So you mean short GME is not a risk-free asset? <laughs> My whole portfolio are risk free assets. Long Fisker, Short Baidu. Long GBTC, but this one I already sold. I don't know. Just kidding. Thanks, Lodbrook. Risk is not understanding what you're doing. Yeah, that's true. Do you think it was more beneficial to learn shorting? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, I started buying stuff. Shorting. I, I traded for like a year before I uh, did my first short. Or two years. year and a half. Because I couldn't short with the Swedish brokers I was trading the US stocks with. I couldn't short with those brokers. So I remember I did my first, you know what? I, I, I think something bad is gonna happen. I, I don't know what, it's just, there's just too many, there's just too many like crazies that have been buying stuff over the past, you know, in a very long time. I feel like there's going to be something bad, like a waterfall decline. I just get this. I, I have no idea. I'm pr probably scaremongering, but it's just the feeling I get. And if it happens, I want to be there. I'm actually going to do some U UXY on the long side, just in case. I'm probably going to lose money on it. Like, I'm talking, this is a low probability eff eff uh, event. This may be like a 5% chance it happens. 95% chance I'm going to lose money on this uh, trade. But if it happens, I'm going to make it big. If it doesn't, I'm going to lose money. It's probably maybe 98.2. I, I don't know. I, I'm just, you know, talking a bunch of bullshit here. I, it's just, I don't know. We've seen it before. Like th these types, th these things happen. Sometimes. We'll see. Again, I have no idea. Didn't see short Baidu? You didn't see what? Short Baidu? It's just another tr a stock that's been going up for a while. You know, look at how nice it's been surfing the 20 day and now it lost the 20 day. And this, you know, if you look at it, it's pretty much the opposite of a bull flag. It was a bear flag, right? Lower highs broke this range. Now imagine if it had been the opposite, then it would have been a long setup. So, you know, next stop I think could be the 50 day. We'll see. Yeah, you know, retired people who missed the entire bull run from 2009 to 2019 and now taking out home equity loans to buy stocks. Yeah, I've heard those stories too. That's how the stock markets work. People get in, you know, a lot of people, they just can't buy when things are cheap and when the odds are with them. 
And then when things go up for many, many years, then they can't resist buying. And that's when the odds are against them. That's when the base rates are heavily against them. We already went to the moon, I think. At least in a lot of stocks. But it's too early to tell. Like yeah, anything can happen. You know, we could we could like this could be the lows and we could uh, you know have these crazy thousand percent runners again next week. No idea. I'm just following what I see right now, and what I see right now is eh, not 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 great. Not great. But al also it's healthy. You know, get a, if you get a real washout, that's going to set up for more upside later. The best time to buy is after correction. Buying stocks after correction, like when you start getting good setups again, when, after the market is bottomed, it's free money. But the key is to not lose your money during the correction. That's why rules are so important. I'm tr talking strictly about trading, not about investing. If you're an investor, you should buy more if the market dips. But you also should have multi-decade time frame. But as a trader, you have to avoid the bad periods and you have to be aggressive in the good periods. Yeah, no alerts triggered during the open. I think it was the same yesterday. No alerts triggered during the open. That hasn't happened in like since 2019 <laughs> or maybe March, February, March last year. It's insane. Also, a bad sign. Another proprietary indicator we have in this community. If no alerts trigger in the first 30 minutes, you have to be careful. My net short percent? I have no idea. Maybe uh, uh, 100% maybe? No, not 100. Maybe 85% or so. Yeah, I'm about 85% short and about less than 10% long. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I know that the 30% the 30 uh, 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 positions indicator, it's been right. Uh, it's happened three times in the past, since last year. It happened, or tw yeah, so it happened here just before the market topped in February last year and we got the COVID crash. That's when I hit 30 positions after a multi month bull run. It happened here. In August, late August last year, after we had a multi-month bear run, and then we had a big rug pull. A lot of the momentum stocks were down, you know, much more than, than the index. And, and it also happened like a couple of weeks ago. It's a, such a great indicator. It's unbelievable. Every time I hit 30 positions, <laughs> time to uh, start taking profits. <laughs> it's kind of interesting we have fewer people in here today than yesterday i thought there was going to be a lot of more people in here after the chat with traders
Yeah, the uh, the chat with traders is apparently not posted on YouTube yet. But if you go uh, on uh, on the web page, it's it's there. Well, because we only talked about one of my three setups specifically, we only talked about the breakout setup. It's on Spotify. Really. Yeah, that's one of the things I wasn't really good at uh, explaining on the podcast. Pretty much, a breakout happens when the stock is breaking the ra a range on the, on the daily and the 60 minute. That, that's a breakout. It doesn't matter what type, what candle it is. Like, just buy the breakout and use the lows of the day. I should have just said that. Instead, I started talking about the 1 minute, 5 minute, 60 minute. Because it's the time frames I use on my charts. And, but, you know, it would have been better if I just said that. Like... When it's, it breaks the range, you buy it. If the market conditions are right, the setup is right. And then you use the lose of the day as a stop. I could have, I kind of complicated some, it. I give myself a four out of five on that interview. But yeah, I could have uh, simplified it a little bit. But I haven't listened to it. Uh, Myself, I just remember some of the things I said. And there you go. That that's what happens when you randomly buy something like UVXY. This is the candle you get. <laughs> oh, did I buy the top? I bought the top. Fucking loser. <laughs> oh. Oh man. That's what happens when you get too bearish in this market. You you get a stick in your ass. Oh well, whatever. As I said, it was a low probability event. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. That's what's so great about the markets. If you're wrong, the market will uh, tell you right away. Yeah, on to the next one. On to the next one. What I think about prop trading firms, SMB Capital. As a successful trader, I don't see a point in being in a prop firm. Like, like why? Like, why? You don't need their capital. And why would you want to give a bunch of your profits to them? I, I just don't see the point. As an aspiring trader, it, it's nice to, you know, get a community and, uh, you know, su surround yourself with the same decent traders. But I, I just don't, as a successful trader, I, I just don't see see the point why anyone would be in a prop firm. Other than if, if you're like a really social people person and you can't just, you know, you can't be alone 
in an office, like at home, for example. Um, I'm covering some riot here. I did add a little bit because it looked it was going to lose the 20, but now it's reclaiming the 20. So I'm actually covering I'm covering what I what I shorted and I'm also covering uh, some of what I uh, had since you know before because now it's it's kind of reclaiming the 20. No gaming during market hours if you're in a prop desk. Yeah, guys, you should reconsider your life if you're on a prop test. No gaming. How can they not allow gaming during uh, trading hours? Like when the markets are slow, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, that's a big deal breaker. Yeah, I guess that's their business model. You always have to do something. You're you're only good to them if you make trades. That's the problem. You're a product. I'm gonna tell you a secret guys, keeping yourself busy with something completely different when there is nothing to do, that's an edge. That's an edge. If you're gaming, you could say you're researching company product. Yeah. That's true. You're doing research. You're, you're doing ex deep fundamental research on a company. Like for example, I play uh, Hearts of Iron 4 right now. A lot of Hearts of Iron 4. Paradox Interactive, it's a Swedish company. Paradox formula. People, fans, and brands. Yeah, they've really they've got a, they've done a really good job. They have really good products. The game has the, the games have really fanatical following. And they're very addictive. Super hard to get into, but once you get their games, they're super addictive. Our products, uh, yeah, Paradox Investors. Let's look at their numbers, report. Let's see here. Uh, revenues. Wait. Okay.
decent growth. You know what I would like to do? Start a gaming company and start like a, like a franchise like they have. Like they're specialized in certain types of games. That would be really cool. Have a, have a small company like 50 employees or something and have a like a franchise. You, you know, every three, four years you re release a new game. That would be so cool. That's, that's something I would like to do. But I have no skills in, uh, in development and in programming and stuff like that. So I would be useless. The most useless gaming company CEO ever. That would be so cool. What's this? Lords of Cheese? Okay, I need to I need to watch this. What's this? They play <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. They playing a game called Lords of Cheese. No, sorry, no wait. The game. Okay, Age of Wonders. Never mind. I thought the game was called Lords of Cheese. <laughs> Start a gaming interface. A gamify the trading app. There's only already one. It's called Robin Hood. It's designed to take money from the poor and give it to the rich. Look at some of these. Um, some things are finding uh, support on their uh, rising moving averages. I'm thinking like stuff like this ICL land is some kind of a close. Uh, clean er energy ETF, I guess a lot of solar stocks and stuff, like they're finding some support on the rising 100 day and building higher lows. Also this TAN is building higher lows. But it's too early to tell, again it's too early to tell, is this going to result with upside or the downside? This could be like a bear flag in the making. Uh, so it's it's too early, like I just don't see... Again, like it's not the time to be aggressive either on the long or the short side. Like a couple of weeks ago, we had some really good short setups and last week, and then they worked and now there's just nothing, really not much to do. Oh, UVXY, I'm out. I'm gonna stalk this UVXY. You never know. One of these times, you, you know, you get a big move. This thing, you know, UVXY wants to, you know, you get some fear in the markets. This thing can double in a flash. Um, you never know. I, I just don't see much right now. <clears throat> CD Projekt, they kind of ruined their image. They, they kind of ruined their um, perfect image. They're not consistent.
Yeah, uh, Snapchat is really Pinterest too. But they, again, they, they, it needs a setup. There's nothing. But yeah, so far it's, it's a champion. It's holding the 20 day. Roku is also very strong. It's still below the 50, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too early to say anything about anything. It's just. This is the time to lose money if you get us too strong bias in either way. Some of these earnings names are starting to come back a little bit. Um, We'll see. There is some bid in them in these names now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Twitter is strong too. We uh, Wix. Yeah, I know this one. Didn't it? Yeah, it broke out a couple of uh, weeks ago here. Look at this. Look at how tight it got. Found support on the 200 day and then it had this rage breakout candle. This is called a pocket pivot. And yeah, it's the same setup I bought on TDOC here. Also pocket pivot. It got really tight. It was surfing the 200 day. Now it did close weak, kind of weak that day. It would have been a nicer candle if it had closed stronger. But that was one of my... Biggest winners on the long side this year. And then I clo uh, sold it when it closed below the 20 day. And look at it now. That's why r rules are so important. The rules are going to determine if you're going to be a winner or a victim. And the market will make you a victim very quickly. If you don't have rules. You don't ever want to be a victim. You see what I just uh, retweeted, this David Tantarelli, like he's a really good follow, experienced trader, really, really like rule focused. He's a bit longer term than I am. Look at what he just tweeted. That's exactly the same thing I said earlier today uh, about ARK. It's the same things. Every bull market, you have this, these funds or groups of funds that can do no, nothing wrong. And they get to go on TV and everyone uh, think they're, you know, oracles and geniuses. And then they, that cycle ends and they will never outperform again, ever. RKT, uh, I wouldn't, wait, RKT, I'm not sure. Like, if it, only if it takes out the highs of the day. But the stop would have to be very wide, like, you know, 
It, w it would be best if it closes strong and goes sideways a few days. Julian Komar. Uh, I used to follow him. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, he has some good in new stuff. ARKX? What is ARKX? Is it another... Uh, well, obviously it's an ARK fund. But what are they focused on? Space, yeah. It's gonna be a copy of the of the existing on on this. Wait, wait, what fund is it? They're pretty much gonna make a copy of an existing ETF, uh, but they're gonna take like five times the fees uh, just because it's Arc. And people will happily buy it. Uh, what's the DTF? Uh, aerospace? Is it the Aerospace DTF? Uh, one of these, maybe? It's going to be mostly the same stocks, but just, you know, disgustingly expensive. <sighs> Top risk management book recommendations. If you follow the link on the screen, you will find out what loop books I recommend. Ufu? They, they should actually... That would be... Is there a ticker called Ufu? Oh, look at that. They're Ufo. Oh, that's, that's just really good. Can't make it up. What stocks are there? Ufo? Wait. What? So if I search for UFO here, ETF, wait, why can't I find UFO here? That's super weird. Uh, how do you see the holdings in this thing? I know you can do it in a, uh, do you click one of these? Wait, 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 here? No. Hey guys, help me. How can I see the holdings in this UFO? I think there's a button here. Watch lists, watch lists, UFO member of, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what you mean. Man, this is too complicated. <sighs> I know there's a button. You, you, get, you can see the holding somewhere here, but I, I, I can't figure out how. I know I've done it before. Whatever, who cares? There's probably some uh, defense and uh, airspace related uh, stocks in that ETF. Wild guess. <sighs> yeah, there's, there should be a button here, right? If I go to ARKK, there used to be a button here, right? Or am I crazy? Oh, there it is. Wait, wait, wait. I found it. Oh, there's no button here on, UF on UFO. But if I go to ARC, there is. That's the button I was looking for. 
Yeah, there's no button here. But if I go to ARKK, the button is here. You can see the holdings. Okay. Man, I thought I was going crazy. I knew there was a button there. But not on UFO. How weird. Is it not classified as an ETF in TC2000? Something is weird. There's a... <laughs> Okay, some things are starting to shape up a little bit, for now. We'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna cut the stream now. There's no point in watching, uh, there's no edge uh, doing anything right now. I think at least we need, uh, you know, at least a few more days of information. It's too early to tell. Um, Thanks, guys. Um, hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Good luck, everyone. Don't uh, forget to put in a lot of work during the weekend. That's the only way you're gonna make it in in the, in the. It's during the weekends. That's where your edge is honed. It's not watching, uh, you know, trading shopping markets. That's not where you get an edge. You get an edge by sitting there and doing things most people are not willing to do. That's where edge comes from. Okay, guys, good luck. See ya.